Jonathan Rochelle. Let's take a look and see who's in my green room tonight. We've got a great show for you. My first guests are three gastronomic bad boys who provide the perfect ingredients for their new show together. It is Gordon Ramsay, Fred Sirix and Gino DeCampo. <laughs> That's a couch full of handsome men right there. Also on the show, the British singer who's had the most solo female UK top ten singles in history. She's chatting, she's also performing live at the end of the show. It's the amazing Rita Ora! <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Alongside them, we've got one of the best comedians in the country right now. It's Ramesh Ranganathan! <laughs> And last but absolutely not least, here's a man who has wrestled with saltwater crocodiles. He spent the night inside a dead camel and he fashioned a wetsuit from a seal. And that was all just on the way to the studio tonight. <laughs> Mr. Bear Grylls, that is gentlemen. Looking fly as always. So that's the show, some great guests now. We don't normally do politics on this show because, of course, we're living in difficult and slightly depressing times, but recently, our Prime Minister, Theresa May, has begun to make politics fun for a whole new generation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about already. <laughs> and here she is, this week, making her entrance at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham. You've got to love this. Please, Theresa, make it stop. <laughs> well, I know she's trying to own it, and I love her for that, but that's why I don't dance at weddings anymore, because it's embarrassing. <laughs> but good on her, I say, never mind the policies, just break out the robot. That's what she's doing. <laughs> she looks like she's a contestant on Take Me Out, doesn't she? <laughs> it's Theresa from London, and she just can't stop dancing. <laughs> and remember, folks, no likey, no votey. <laughs> Uh, now, there's nothing like a big family reunion. What a lovely time when everyone gets together. And what better way to record the happy occasion than by hiring a drone, or using one you've got already, to film the event in its full panoramic glory. Nothing could possibly go wrong, could it? Look at this. Would you like to see that again? Yeah. Can we show that again? What a bunch of terrible people you are. <laughs> Let's show it again. Can we see it again? <laughs> well, <laughs> just a bit of fun. We should point out, I should say she was absolutely fine, but you didn't care, did you? <laughs> She was fine, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my first guest out. It's the threesome you've all been waiting for. Gordon Ramsay, Fred Syriax and Gino DeCampo. Here they are. Well, this is... Now, this is a treat. Isn't oh. this a treat, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. To have three such handsome and successful... I would say young, but that would be a light... men <laughs> out here. Uh, so, you guys, you did that show. It was a Christmas show. It was a big hit. Yeah, but special, you guys, yeah. you were friends before you made that show. Is that correct? Uh, sort of, yes. Yeah, we have our moments, like any threesome. Well, Gordon and I, we well, know each other... No, <laughs> but... <laughs> 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 First of all, look at the way he's dressed. Yeah. I told him, big interview tonight. I didn't, do, I didn't I, know we were going to a wedding or something. No, but you no, said no, we're no, going to go to see Jonathan. No, I was all right. I just, yeah. I said, get your Nobody shit together. Nobody told me about Jonathan Ross' show. They said, oh, oh, you thought it was a social? Jonathan. You thought it was just I a social? I thought it was yeah. house. Yeah. I bought you some wine. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. We were in Italy in a supermarket and we no. saw this wine, it says fruity, sophisticated, mature. We thought, 
You this told me. for Jonathan uh, okay. would be fantastic. This is uh, a southern Italian wine come from uh, uh, Campania, yes. where the Vesuvius is volcano. And <laughs> have a look at the label. <laughs> yes, I've had a look at the label. Thank you. <laughs> Mature and sophisticated. Uh, <laughs> don't look at me. No. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Everybody needs a bottle of Kunto in yeah, their lives. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, you guys, though, new series, they're back on the road, and uh, the three of you, you make great travelling companions, but you travelled this time, you started off, you went to Gino's country. You went yes, to Italy. Yes, we started in Italy, okay. we went to Naples, so because I wanted to show them where I was born. Nice. So I took them around Naples on a Vespas. Yeah. Uh, that was crazy. And, uh, you, of course, Fred, you're known more for, like, the service side of the industry, of course. Sure. But you're travelling here with one of the greatest chefs in the world, and Gordon. <laughs> and so what did you learn? <laughs> what do you learn about food from these guys that you didn't know already, if anything? Well, it's totally two different philosophies. Yeah. Gordon is always faster, higher, bigger, and Gino is minimum effort, maximum satisfaction. So, really, so, <laughs> you, so you just so want... that's what it's about. You just want to get in there, get the job done? No, no. No, it's called, it's, called, it's called fucking lazy. Yeah. <laughs> he is lazy. He works literally 90 minutes a day, three days a week. Wow. He's just been on holiday for the last three months. Look at the state of him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, OK, so you were travelling by camper van as well for camper part of the van, journey. Yeah. Yes. And you let Gino drive. Now, was that a wise thing to do? Well, he said he knew the roads better. He was shocking. He couldn't keep his hands on the wheel. He's the worst driver in the world. Thank you. Gino me. cannot drive. But the yes. problem is that Gordon was was making him do stuff. Just like when <laughs> we arrive at the farm, he said, "Yeah, it's okay. You can go." And Gino but went, "Yeah, yeah, I can go." Up. He wants me out. And, and then, then the van was stuck on the curb, and he was balancing like this. Yeah. It's like the Italian job. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Because he winds me up when yeah. I drive. Do this, do that, do the other. Then he yeah. talks to me. Of course I'm going to turn around and talk to him. Yeah, <laughs> that's polite. Yeah, You're not, just being polite. Not up a mountain you don't turn yeah. around and talk to me. So then why do you talk to me when I drive? <laughs> well, that's, that's where well, the van... Well, you abandoned it. You just left it there, didn't you? you well, we couldn't it. move it. I know, but you we, can't... We were fucked. We yeah. couldn't get that thing off there. Yeah. He can't drive, period. Yeah. No, you are useless. Can I just... <laughs> you know that. I don't like when people talk to me when I drive. Have the three of you thought about relationship counselling? <laughs> <laughs> but you slept in the caravan some nights yes. ago, didn't you? Was that a fun experience? No. Or was it... Two... <laughs> two... Two thirty in the morning. This little fucker's in my sleeping bank. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's, he's spooning me. Yeah. I could hear one's... noises like... In my sleeping blanket. He got in the bed with you. He undone the zip and got inside the blanket. <laughs> I Come... was scared. I... No, I was like, oh, be... oh, oh, he's... Hold coming. on. You were fucking naked. Wow. <laughs> scared? That, that does it matter? Yes, it does. <laughs> Gordon, it's, it's only skin, Gordon. <laughs> Well, you did you... Should, we, should we talk to Jonathan the way you wake me up in the morning no, no. by bashing your wheelie on my foot? Oh. <laughs> should we say that? No. Should we I... take this to another level no. now? I told you I needed a pee. Oh, so, so, so don't you wake somebody up by doing that? <laughs> I mean, that is not true. That, Fred, is, that Fred, is not true. Fred, listen. You didn't bang your wheelie on my foot. No. <laughs> Ramsey, did you or did you not bang your wheelie on his foot? Yes. See? <laughs> Let's have a look at Philly Nexon. Now, this is on this Thursday night on uh, ITV at 9 pm. It's the first of three. We're going to love it. Have a look at this. I'm going to take you in places that you've never seen before. Do you know where you're going? Everything is under control. Shit! <laughs> Christ, they're all nude. Let's take our pants off. No, 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 no. Do you know that? And then... No, Gino, fucking hell. No, come on. Stop it. Italy. It's a bello. Bello, right? What a beautiful camera. Whenever I see I get emotional, because it was a great, great experience. It was a great journey, right? It was. OK, so that's... Uh, Italy, and of course, then the next episode, I believe, Fred, you take them to your country. Yeah, we went to France. Wow. Uh, uh, was, that was, was a hosting, fucking uh... waste of time. No, it was great. <laughs>
I was hosting an oyster festival with the king of oysters, Joël Dupuch. The oyster competition, yeah. okay. Well, I'm talking... What is an oyster competition? So you, it was, you we have to eat more. Well, well, it was a festival. A festival, big one, or... celebration. Gino did one with like a lemoncello. Fred did one. He sprayed it with a perfume. <laughs> You sprayed a perfume on an oyster. It was delicious. Yeah. People loved it. Gino, whose oyster was the best? <laughs> oh, very different way to do it. Gordon did uh, um, a deep fried oyster. It's like shallow, a shallow, yeah, shallow, it was shallow, yeah, shallow fried. Shallow, it was like a chicken nuggets, a posh chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Because he's, I mean, he's Scottish, that's why no, he tries to... No, but just for KFC. everybody to understand, yeah. I'm not... Uh, I'm just saying the way you did it. I chicken fucking nugget. But that's good. No, I just said it's like... I didn't say you did chicken... I said like a How? chicken nugget. But Gino, that's good, cos normally he just uses a microwave, so that's... <laughs> <a statement. laughs> you speak French... You, you, uh, Fred, you speak French and Italian as well as English, don't yes. you? Yes. So you're at home in both countries, I guess. Yes. You speak French. Do you speak any Italian? A little bit of Italian, yes. Okay. And do you speak any English? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and then for Gordon's one, I was surprised. I thought you'd bring them to your country, England, but you took them to Scotland. I'm instead. Scottish. Come on, stop it. I wanted I... to go to Los Angeles. <laughs> but you were born in Scotland, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yeah, Glasgow. But you grew up. Yeah. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Stratford Haven. I lived in sure. Scotland for about six, seven years. And then so you still feel a connection, though, a very yeah, strong connection. Time. Yeah, okay. big time. And where did you take them in Scotland? Well, obviously, you know, the sort of French Riviera and Sardinia, etc. That was all a little bit flash and sort of, you know, surreal. So I wanted to take them to some of the most amazing countryside anywhere in the world. So I took them up to Oban. Um, we went, we went uh, diving for uh, hand dive scallops on the west coast of Scotland. The weather was beautiful. Wow. But I was so embarrassed because when we started diving, these two are the only ones that want to put hat and gloves on to get under the water. What? <laughs> he's putting a hat on in the water because he's cold. Middle of summer. But it was minus five. <laughs> the water. That is too cold. It was freezing. My, even my willy went in was like a turtle. <laughs> Everything disappeared that day. It, it's, it's been inward for 40 years. <laughs> so don't give me that shit. So what was the Scottish delicacy you went for? We went for oysters there. You went for... You had roast suckling on the beach in... in we uh, did the yeah, roast yeah. suckling, yes. What did you do in Scotland? I did the most Pasta. amazing... Excuse me. <laughs> I made, I made, I made well, a... Just imagine you're going to make up some bullshit. You did pasta. Did, did, you, do... <laughs> did you do pasta? I did a ravioli of lobster. Which is pasta. pasta. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> It's right. like me going to Italy, hey, mama, come here, I'm going to give you a bang as a mash. Yeah. <laughs> um, Golden, you're, now, you're, all three of your fathers, so you're the yeah. age now, I think your, your kids have just both left home, is that why? Right? Because yeah, Gino's, right. you're still at home, aren't they? Yeah, uh, Jack and Ollie. Just so you've got the empty nest now? Yeah, just uh, Tilly, uh, obviously, Tana and, and myself um, took Jack down to the college uh, last uh, week. Man, that was hard, put him in his little room. When I got the little sort of, you know, oh God, I can't believe I'm saying this, but fettuccine and pasta for him to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional <laughs> Scottish food. <laughs> it's student food. Yeah. Then I, I left him there and then got in the car. I was a mess. You know, you, did you cry? Well, my best mate was just sort of left Ramsey, me. Did you cry? Yes, I did. That's yeah, nice. I, I, That's I, sweet. I, I cried I, when I dropped my daughter for university. Yeah, well. Tears big, of joy. Big um, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then literally the next day, put Holly into university. It was like, man, this is this is this it's is real, tough. So it? you've just got Tilly at home now, and so she'll be leaving. I bet she can't wait to get away. Well. <laughs> no, because they want to be independent, don't they? She's sixteen. Yeah, I know, but you know, you, you can study from home. What are you going to do when they're all gone? Cry. <laughs> <laughs> Gino. Can your kids watch what you're on TV? Because obviously we know you as being uh, on This Morning sometimes as a chef and that's yeah. very family friendly, but mainly I think we know you these days being on Celebrity Juice where you are, you're off the hook. You, you, it's, a, it's a wild show. Yeah, I, uh, my, my children, yeah, they do watch. Yeah. How old is the oldest? Is 13, is that right? Uh, Luciano is 16, 16 and Rocco is 13. 13. Obviously my little girl doesn't watch. How old is she? Uh, She's six. OK, well, absolutely not, then, yeah. Absolutely not. But the other not, two, yeah. you let them watch Celebrity Juice? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's fun. And, I mean, they... Listen, whatever I'm going to say, that I will... I probably already said it at home. Yeah. And done it at home. <laughs> so it's fun. Yeah. He's trying to get his son to date my daughter. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there is. That would what be amazing. Join that? the clans together. <laughs> Your son marrying my daughter. Awesome! Yeah. <laughs> I have to fucking pay for the wedding. Yeah. And then he's going to be fucking Italian. Well, you're good at it anyway. <laughs> Pasta, fettuccine. Seriously? Traditional food. Traditional food. No! We can make it happen. No! Uh, I love having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming back on. I really appreciate it. I love having oh, you. Thank you for They're great guests, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing company. Well, we're saying thank you to Gino DeCampo, Craig Siriac, 
and a full score from Ramsey. They're going to stay here and they've done their way still to come. We've got Rita Orr, Wallace Langan Nathan and Bear Grylls. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's great fun. We've still got Gino, we've got Fred, we've got Gordon Ramsay here. And let's get my next guest out. She is a style icon who's had four UK number ones and sold millions of records worldwide. Let's just take a look at her in action. To snog me, the Frenchie in the middle. Yeah, well, of course, he's not. It was an accident. Don't yeah. lie. Nah. I've seen the shows. I've seen the shows. Uh, it's lovely to have you back. You've done the show a few times, and I, I always, uh, I'm very excited when you come back on. Now Thank you're you. spending a lot of time away on tour at the moment. I am. Yeah. And yeah. The reason I'm asking this is, do you get time to to cook? Do you ever cook yourself? Uh, is this bad to say on this sofa that I actually just can't cook wow. anything? I know it's. Well, really that makes bad. four of you then. <laughs> <laughs> but you must be able to like boil an egg. No. What? No. Scramble an egg. I can do a scrambled egg, yeah. Good girl. With yeah. no salt, though. No. Uh, no, pasta? No, no pasta. <laughs> One time I cooked pasta for like 45 minutes, not even joking you. Yeah, that's not good. It becomes kind of. I just don't know when you know when it's cooked. Like, how do you know when it's finished it cooked? It takes two minutes. Yeah. Does it? 45. And it's, it says something on the packet as well. It's a cooking time. <laughs> You know, um, we talked about food around the world. Yeah. And one of the fun things in the guy's show, which I hope you watch, it's great fun, is they talk about eating uh, buffalo mozzarella. I love okay. that. That's my favourite cheese. I love it too. Did you yeah. know the milk comes from buffaloes? It does come from <laughs> buffalo. No, it does. No, I it doesn't. It does. I didn't know that either. It does, doesn't it? In the south of Italy, we uh, uh, raise buffalo, yeah. But buffaloes are huge. So where's the cheese coming out of? No, but it's no, about the... <laughs> milk, the... Milk the teeth. You milk a buffalo? You milk... We, we yeah, the female ones. We, we milk... Buffalo is not just... Then... I didn't know you could milk a buffalo. Honest to God, I had no idea. Nor did I. So, no, 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 not the uh, male one. No. <laughs> She didn't say the male so you... one. No, I'm just... No, 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 no. So do you milk I... the male buffalo? No, 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 you don't want to do that. That's no. called something else. What kind of chefs are you? I'm confused! <laughs> no, oh, no, the, the, la the, the lady buffalo, the woman buffalo, the female buffalo, has... Uh, teats. Uh, teats like, like a, a cow. Yes. And then... And then, yes. and then oh, you I just thought... squeeze them So down. why don't you just make buffalo mozzarella from a cow, since you're milking... No, you can, you can also make it from a cow, but completely different flavour. The original oh, that's uh, like mozzarella... Burrata. It's like the burrata, which is from Puglia, yes. Now, uh, you're a single woman at the moment. Ah. Uh. OK. I believe. Ah. Uh. Uh, obviously, all these wrinkled old men are too old for you, but... Depending you, on... Yeah. If you were choosing between uh, Scotland... Jonathan, France, don't do this! If, you, if I could set you up on a blind date and I said to you, I've got a nice Scottish gentleman, I've got a very smooth, <laughs> suave, sophisticated Frenchman, or I've got an Italian guy, I don't really know what to make of him, but... <laughs> He looks very confident. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm a very big about, like, personalities. Yeah. But I'm also a bit about, like, attire and, like, the looks and the yes. whole package. But I'm gonna have to say, A for personality over here on the right side. Well, I didn't even put myself in but the look, mix. But look, I'm putting right. you in the mix. Because you've got a really great personality. That's but the worst you know thing. What? No one wants to hear that. <laughs> no one. No one wants to hear that. No! Who has ever wanted to hear? No one wants to hear. He's like really Italian and like Italian. A bit too, a bit too weird. Here. Just like everything's really exaggerated. Yeah. And do you know what? You are a little bit more like I kind of a bit more suspicious about what you're about. <laughs> 
He's a dark horse. Is Lip might be. Yeah. But now I've just realised that Gordon's Scottish. I love a drink, so yeah. I'm going to have to have a light. Li You're a going with Gordon, Scots. okay? Yeah, well, that's yeah, yeah, nice yeah. to know. Sorry, guys. Really nice. no, don't be upset. Don't, don't be yeah. upset. I've also dated a Scot before and I had the best time ever with yeah, him. So yeah, 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 yeah. Did yeah. he cook yeah. pasta for you? No. no. <laughs> uh, you got a new album out. Weeder's got a new I album. Do, it's a yeah. brand new album, and this has been six years. I know. I can't believe it. I know. I promise to never ever. Here it is. It's Phoenix. And so why so long? Why six years? Because I just wasn't ready, to be honest with you. I kind of really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I, my first album was so incredibly powerful for me and, like, overwhelming in my life that I really wanted to um, do something that I felt really proud of, that I would be proud of for the rest of my life. Uh, now, here's the exciting thing about Weeda, uh, is, and I've got the statistics here, you've had the most UK top tens for any British female solo artist. That's yeah. amazing. The most yeah. of any British female Thank solo you. artist. Thank you. No matter where you look. Uh, wow, that's great. So it sounds hey, amazing. Congratulations. It sounds amazing coming from you. Your so are really your family cool. proud? Your mum must be very proud of you. They were really proud until like so before I had this um, song "Let You Love Me" that I'm going to perform for you guys Live tonight. Live at the end of show, it's going to look incredible. Yeah, though, and um, uh, <laughs> I was actually equal with Shirley Bassey and uh, someone else, and. Um, the point that I was telling my parents was like, Mum, can you believe this? Dad, can you believe this? And they were like, oh, we love Shirley Bassey. <laughs> <laughs> so will you celebrate? Are you going to go out and have a big uh, celebration? Even? Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a great time, okay. yeah. And so does it start with the meal in a restaurant or you just go straight out to the club? <laughs> For some reason, no, no, I don't really go out to a club. And say, I don't know, I don't go clubbing that much anymore. I kind of just like having good people around me. It's all about the vibe and the people and the music and the drinks and stuff. And once I have a drink, my appetite suddenly disappears, which is very convenient. So yeah. I just kind of just... Eating is cheating. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> OK, um, Weeda, you're going to perform live. Do you want to tell us what the song's about or would you rather we listen to it and figure it out for ourselves? Oh, no, Let You Love Me is basically a, a song that, obviously, I, I really wanted to involve my kind of, like, experience in love so far in my life. And I thought that I always make it very difficult for myself. And so Let You Love Me is basically a song of frustration and kind of, like, growth within myself, being like, I just wish I could just let you love me for once. But how do you make it difficult for yourself? I'm not any way, shape or form, don't have any trust issues. I'm more just like, what did you do last night? And why didn't you invite me? I suffer severe FOMO. I've got a great personality. You don't need to <laughs> yeah. worry about what I was doing. Right? I suffer severe FOMO. Because some people, like, don't know how to enjoy their time with their partner. And the yeah. whole thing is, you want to go out and have fun with your partner as well as, like, you know, yeah. enjoy each other, right? You have Ladies, to help me out here! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, OK, so uh, now we're going to have you performing live in the show. Do you Yay. get nervous even on a shallow issue? Yeah, I get nervous all the time. I'm at, I'm no, but I'm looking forward. It's my first live TV performance of this song, so I'm really excited Well, we're about really it. looking forward to hearing it, aren't yeah. we, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you. Before Thank we you. do that, one thing I've got to say, I'm genuinely excited about this, because I, uh, I love Pokemon. Do you? And you're in the Pokemon movie. I just wrapped it, yeah. It's yeah, coming yeah, out yeah. next year. It it's called out. Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yeah! <laughs> it is, yeah. I love Pokemon. I was always a fan of it since I was a kid. It was oh. so funny, cos I was the oldest um, person on set. <laughs> and what... Uh, so, is it a live-action film, It's though, a live-action Pokemon movie. So, you're in movie. it? I am, yeah. With, with Pikachu? Yeah, but it's obviously not the cartoon. It's, like, a person... It's a man... Of... Yeah, it's like a person... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, say this is Pikachu. I really wish you'd stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> So say this is Pikachu. Yeah. Yeah, and the other, and the man's dressed in like blue, so Pikachu's just. <laughs> oh, like... I see. So you're looking at like a hand. Y yeah, but you're... it's not. But it's the Pikachu person. Yeah. Pikachu. No, but yeah, I'm a, a big fan, and I, it's first kids movie, and I love kids movies. I just sit there. And watch Are you a Pikachu it. fan? Are you a Pokemon fan, Gordon Ramsay? Uh, no, no, not a big Pokemon <laughs> fan. No. <laughs> do you have any fun in your life, Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> <laughs> do you get drunk ever? Like, do you go out? Oh, ever? oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. He got me drunk in the camper van. Oh, yeah. On Lemoncello. He oh, I love me. Lemoncello. Oh, my God. It's good, wasn't it? What kind of a drunk are you, Gordon? Uh, a happy, funny, witty drunk. Quite, he doesn't know. swear anymore to any... Uh, <laughs> yeah, he suddenly uh, becomes very oh. polite and friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it gets all like... Woo, 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 what, do you, what do you get like when you're drunk? It's usually like, r like right now. Oh. Yeah. So, you're, so you're drunk right now? No, no. no. Like, relax. It's, oh, it's, relax. It's relax. And Rita, are you a messy drunk? Do you get drunk? No, I'm not a messy drunk. I'm just... A, I'm fun. I just like to have fun. I like dance a lot when I drink, yeah. Party. And yeah. I just like... I can't... I don't know when to go home, though. That's my problem. Like, I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm very professional. Very professional. Job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're always going to perform for us at the end of the show. The yeah. fabulous Rita Ora, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There she is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, still man. to come, one less rang than from the very funny man himself, and Bear Grylls will be out here. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest right out of here. He is a fabulous comedian, whether on stage or on screen. It is the very funny Mr. Ramesh Wanganathan. <laughs> It's good to have Ramesh here. I, yes. I, I think you're just a delight on TV. I love watching you. I love hearing you do comedy. You are, of course, a vegan. Yes, I sort of... Uh, I've, I've been on here for about ten seconds. I should mention it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm asking because I know you've been filming away a lot. You've done a lot of travel shows. I know you went to Albania, which is... Uh, Rita's, uh, I did. Hungry. I went to Albania. I got a tattoo. I got the Albanian flag. Oh, I've got exactly tattooed. the same one. Really? On my arm. No. Yes. It's a double-headed... The old double Yeah, it's our eagle. eagle. That's so crazy that you got that. I know. I know. Uh, yeah, a mistake. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was just in this bunker. Yeah. They've got loads of bunkers in Albania. Yeah. And this artist had bought this bunker yeah. and he was like doing pictures and stuff. So and that's we... a hangover from the Cold War, I guess. Yes, the yeah. Like, so all those bunkers, th so some of the bunkers are just sitting empty, but some of them they've turned them into cafes and stuff. And some of them they've used to intimidate British comedians into getting tattoos. <laughs> um, but, um, so we just walked into this thing and he was showing us his pictures and all these pictures are insane, like Satan and. Stuff like that. And then he said, I also do tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they do it. And he went, you want? And I just thought, uh, yeah. So I just, I just... <laughs> so I just got this done. So yeah. when you get home, how did you explain that to your wife? Did you... Well, just... she has got very little interest in my physical appearance. So, <laughs> so she... <laughs> uh, I've got to be honest with you, I just got married for immigration. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's... Uh, not me, she's Polish. Yeah. No, I'm, not <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, she, is, she is white, I'm saying that... Because it's essential. I'm not showing off, but she is. Yeah. Um, and it is, <laughs> it is as magical as I was promised. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They yeah. just <laughs> smell different, feel different. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Ramesh, you'll be filled to know. Uh, I mean, he's, he's working flat out at the moment. Loads of shows, loads of great shows. But you've got a book out, and the book is a very funny book called Straight Out of Crawley. That's a reference to Straight Out of Compton. Correct, of yes. Of course, I'm which a is uh, fan. NWA. Yes. Uh, and Crawley, of course, isn't by anyone's test imagination. It isn't Compton, is it? I've been there. You've been no. to Crawley or Yeah, Compton? I've been to Crawley, yeah. Crawley. You've been to Crawley? Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> Crawley, that's unusual. Dude, but... you... I can't imagine what... It's like seeing a unicorn, you in Crawley. <laughs> <laughs> because Crawley, most of us know it as a stop on the way to Gatwick. I mean, that's kind of normally... Oh, that's how I've heard of it. Yes. <laughs> OK, OK. It's this where is they park like... the cars for Gatwick. <laughs> oh, OK. That's right, isn't it? I didn't expect to experience this kind of racism. <laughs> 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 I'm sure it's a lovely place. I've never been there. Is it? No, you, you, you're still very fond of it. You, you go there a lot. Uh, well, I live there. You still live in Crawley? Yeah. I wow, saw, you're not I doing saw... as well as I thought. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, weirdly... Well... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, listen, that's not fair. I occasionally go to Horsham. <laughs> uh, but, um, I do like it. I, I, it's, I've just become... I've well, you grew up there. Yeah, and so my mum's not going to let... My, look, my mum lives in Crawley. And your mum seems wonderful. She seems wonderful, yes. <laughs> I've seen her on your shows a lot. She is what I call a flamethrower to my self-esteem. Yeah. That is what I would describe my mum. How was she when that. you were growing up? Was she, uh, was she one of those loving, nurturing mothers who protected you from the grim realities of life? Uh, this is one way of describing it. I mean, I, I, what I would say is she would detect whenever I was feeling good about myself <laughs> and then shit all over that. <laughs> so, so... <laughs> One of the things it was... I don't, no, my mum's very supportive, but Sri Lankan mums are very honest. And my mum was a feed... My mum would feed me loads, but then have a go at me for being overweight. It was just sort of this... <laughs> she, like, she used to, um... She used to give me, uh, jam sandwiches for... Not for lunch, for break. Just sort of <laughs> midway through the... Sort of about 10.30, you think, I need to smash for eight rounds of sandwiches. And that was how my mum... That was how my mum saw it. And then um, the school became concerned because, like, this, <laughs> this tubby, brown blancmange of a child is sort of <laughs> sitting there Blamonded. just... Couldn't even go out because he hasn't got time to finish all of the food he's been given. <laughs> and so I was, like, slamming through these sandwiches. So the school phoned... I can you imagine this? They phoned my mum and said, your son is a fat prick. Like, you need to... <laughs> you need to do something about this. Right, he is out of control. <laughs> and she told me to hide when I was eating my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs>
I, let me just say this for the record. I'm not happy about what's happened with that woman. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> get, putting her on TV is one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made. Well, and now she my... was very good on TV. I yeah, mean, she was and, very good with you. Yeah, she was fine, but I'm, I'm hoping that that stops <laughs> and, I will, and I will do whatever it takes, even that means getting her deported. Like, yeah. I, I, literally, <laughs> I don't care, man. It's out of control. I mean, you talk about her a lot in the book. The book is very funny. I can't recommend it highly enough. But you also talk a lot about kind of like... Very, I was surprised at how personal it was, where you talk about things in your life that, like, your, your father, yeah. who, who left your family for a while and was yeah. with someone else, and yeah. that seems like, a, like that was an uncomfortable period, I imagine. Yeah, it was. I mean, I, when I started writing the book, I was sort of thinking, I'm going to write a funny book. You know, I want to write a funny book. That is... Wow. That photo <laughs> wow. is... Um, but I, was, I, I just sort of wanted to write a funny book. But then, I was sort of thinking, I want to write a book that's, that sort of explains my journey or whatever, for want of a better word, to, to where... And, that period of my life, you know, my dad, uh, my mum and dad had problems. My dad went to prison. You know, we got our, you know, we got our house repossessed, and there's all these sort of struggles. And I thought, well, you know, that is a that was a dark period in our lives. But it, I think I just thought I put it in because I, I genuinely don't think I would have ended up being a comedian had I not gone through that. And what about your wife? Did she read the book? Is she because my talk... wife could not give less of a shit about anything like that. <laughs> Listen, I did... I... I honestly... <laughs> let me give you an example, right? Please I used to try material out. Like, when I started when doing stand When you were starting out When I started out, I'd try material. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, I try, I try a bit of material. I'd go, I've got this idea, what do you think about this? And she'd go, the best thing that she's ever said to me is, the most positive thing, I'm sure the people that like you would like that. <laughs> that <that's... laughs> That's literally... I did a, a series, Asian Provocateur, right? Yeah. It was like, I thought, a huge success for me, like a big show. That was what made my mum into the unfortunate star that she's yeah. become. <laughs> Lisa has not even watched it. Wow. She, she's not watched an episode of it. And why is she not watching it? Why because you... she's a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually be pleased to know he's not just doing comedy, and we see him on comedy panel shows sometimes, but also you've got a sitcom coming up. Yes, and yeah. that's kind of autobiographical or semi-autobiographical. This, this, uh, this yeah, as well. it's um, called the Reluctant Landlord. Basically, my dad, he ran this book export company. My dad was a bit of a, like a, a bit of a party animal. He's so... like a Del Boy kind of character. Yeah, right? he maybe was. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was. Yeah, Brown Del Boy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> so he, um, so he ran. He basically ran a book export company. It was in. It was in London. We lived in Crawley. So he got. So he took it over. He got fed up with the commute, so he brought the book export company to Crawley, near Crawley, and then on his lunch break, he would go to this pub for lunch. And then he said to me... He, well, he came back to, to my mum one day and he said, ''Do you know something? I realised I have much more fun during lunch <laughs> than I do during the working day.'' <laughs> so he sold the company and bought the pub. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so he bought this pub and then passed away. So then we had this pub. So the sitcom is basically this guy that's running this so pub. So it's kind of what really happened. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, in truth, we gave up the pub after a few months. Fairly quickly, But, yeah. I, but we... I sort of lived the pub life for, like, 15 years or so. Uh, so growing up in Crawley, uh, a young... Uh, we've established fairly uh, well-padded Sri Lankan child. Wow! <laughs> you said that. I yeah. Think, yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> I mean, no, I one, saw, one I... can't help but think that you face some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that picture. Who knows? Come on. This is not, that's the type of photo that you see. If I'd gone missing, and then the, <laughs> and then, and then the caption underneath says, he wasn't a popular boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you develop this love of hip-hop. You're yes. a big, big, massive hip-hop fan. I am, yeah. Uh, oh. And so, uh, were there other hip-hop fans in Crawley? Did, did you, were there a lot of you, or did you form a small group of hip-hop enthusiasts? Uh, I was in... I, I tried to... We tried to form a little... There's, like, three of us <laughs> that were into hip-hop, and I started, like... We started trying to find, like, form a band. We formed a little rap crew What was called, the name of your crew? Uh, First Conviction. <laughs> and <laughs> my uh, MC name was uh, Ranga, the Lazy-Eyed Assassin. And, and, and we would... <laughs> It's a kid out of Crawley just trying to make his way. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to uh, spit any bars. Yeah. But I am going to ask you, what were the titles of your of the self-penned... Uh, were they raps or were they songs? What did you create? I sort of just did, like, 
Uh, I did one called Rotten Like Dot Cotton. <laughs> Surprisingly, not here. <laughs> <laughs> Rotten lap dot cotton. Come on, give us a verse from that. Come on, give us a verse. How did that begin? You've got to. Uh, <laughs> I come rotten, like smacking <laughs> dot cotton on the bottom. My style is super memorable, your style is super forgotten. It's not on, I rock on. Any track I drop on, scary like a prisoner about to strap his cock on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ramesh, it's so great to have you on the show. Uh, he's a brilliant comedian. The book is very, very funny. It's out right now. Ramesh Ranganathan, ladies and gentlemen. Smash the So to come, I'll be chatting to Bear Grylls and Rita Ora performing live right here in the studio. See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. He has got, as the kids would say, bear survival skills. That's why right, it's Bear Grylls. Bear, you, bear, you look amazing as always. You should be James Bond. You should be the next oh, James yes. Bond. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you're we know we know Bear's a courageous man. We know him from his adventure TV. But here's something that makes him even more courageous. He actually cooked for Gordon Ramsay. You had him over and you cooked a meal for him, didn't you? Yeah. yeah this definitely wasn't on TV. But this was just. Do you remember this? It was I... a few years ago in uh, California, and it was Easter Sunday. Yes. And we'd been trying to get together, and I said, well, listen, bring the family round, and I'll, I'll cook. <laughs> and um, that was my first error. <laughs> anyway, I said, listen, I said to my wife, Shar, I said, I'll do the starter, and I'll, I'll do a nice man. I've got it covered. And then about ten minutes before you arrive, you like, won't know this, but I suddenly realised, hold on, I've forgotten the pudding, I've forgotten the dessert. Shara, but she goes, oh, I don't want to quickly just rustle, you know, an apple crumble together, you know, do that. Yeah. We had a very nice lunch, good fun. Gordon was so sweet, but at the end of it, as he, I said, come on, just give me the honest, which was probably another area asking for an honest. <laughs> he goes, to be honest, the, the, the starter was terrible, the main course was <laughs> abysmal, but... I'm not surprised. You were saved by the pudding. Yes. <laughs> you left the skin on the avocado. I know. It's like eating sandpaper. <laughs> <laughs> the, the beef tasted like Gandhi's flip-flop and the dessert was delicious. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know why? Because when he's out in the wild, you would eat, presumably, you eat an avocado with the stone and all. <laughs> Presumably. We'll go with that. Yeah, well, the lesson was I married a great girl who cooks a killer apple crumble, but I apologise <laughs> for the start of the minute. Now, you know, the guys that we've been talking about their road trip and they've just been on a road trip and it's an exciting new show, but you go on a very different kind of road trip when you take people away with you. Uh, and I know, I mean, I was lucky enough to go on one and it was great fun. Um, when you take people away, do you keep in touch with them afterwards? I mean, how many people like Obama, President Obama, <laughs> who you spent time with, who's, you know, just, a, I think by anyone's definition, a great man. Are you still in touch with the president, the ex-president? Um, initially, the first season, I was so excited to meet these people and, and, you know, I always wanted to keep in touch. And what I found is that everyone wanted to keep in touch for about a week. And then they sort of <laughs> stopped texting. Do you I worry, do always do you, try and keep in touch. Do you them. worry that they set up a WhatsApp group without you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's been the most fun for you to be out there with? Obviously, I know meeting the president was a great thing, but who else have you had who you really thought this is a great moment for me? Or you've just enjoyed personally being with them? Uh, Julia Roberts was a, was a dream one to take. Uh, Roger Federer was a so big So you've been fan. out with Roger Federer? Yeah, this has been out in America. So you, where did you take Roger? Roger we did in the Swiss Alps. And he'd always said, listen, wow. I'll do it when I retire. And actually, he got back from the Australian Open. He was super fired up and yeah. he said, oh, let's just go and, you know... But, but I guess you have to be journey. careful because someone like that, you know, a professional sportsman, if they get an injury out there, that's game over for them in their career. So you, I suppose it's a big risk for them to take. Well, he, he was definitely... That was his big thing before. I'm just, I can't get injured. You know, I've got a big year ahead. So, you know, but I'm always aware of this anyway. You, you've got to look after these people and you've got to get it right. But with him, he was into crampons, you know, razor sharp sort of spikes on yeah. the bottom of his boots down, you know, vertical frozen waterfalls and stuff. So I was nervous, but... After about a few steps, he just was instantly into it, and he's got this obviously this amazing balance, and I would think so. Great, yeah. So what is it, Bear? Why is it that you want us all to be fit? What's going on? Because you you must, I presume, you get a buzz from it, don't you? Because I know you're involved in Be Military Fit, and this is one of your many new projects. And I know you're you're involved, and I know this is coming from a good place, but you want us to to because I, I I I don't want to be fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. Not not everyone does, but the thing is, a lot of people do, and a lot of people maybe are nervous to start. 
And my experience, I mean, for my job, I need to be fit. And, and personally, I love training outdoors. You're super fit. And, uh, and this is just a way, you know, we've got something like now 15,000 members of Be Military Fit around wow. the country in hundreds of different parks, training outside in all weather. So do you use, cool use army see. training methods, methods that you, when you were in the forces, that you used? Totally. And, and a lot of veterans, once they leave the services, come and work with us as trainers. And it's just an experience for people. It's making fitness fun. It's making it a community. Yeah. And it's so good to see so many girls as well joining now. Because I think in the past, you know, whenever I used to see these guys training in the park, it was quite military. It was all the guys in the combats. And maybe it put some of the girls off. But it's, it's, we've really tried to sort of open this up to older people, to younger ones, you know, families, and, and to women as well. Oh, I can't imagine Aww. dragging my kids. Well, it's a lovely... Yeah, give them a round of applause. Yeah. That is a nice <laughs> But I can't imagine if I suggested to my kids we go out for a day exercising together. I don't think they'd call me back for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> I know they would. But do you, you, I mean, you're super fit. Do you work out with your kids? Do you get them? Are they into fitness with you? Yeah, I mean, Tana's you know super fit. Um, this year for the twins' 18th uh, birthday party, whilst she all the mates were getting iPads and phones, yeah. etc. I got the kids a, a place in the marathon, <laughs> the London Marathon, which was sure. good for them at 18 to run a yeah, marathon. Yeah, but what a terrible person you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're loaded. You, you bought them a place in the marathon. <laughs> charity, charity, come on. And also, yeah. I think that example has got to come down from the parents and set them, you know, uh, set them up for a healthy life. Wamish, are you inspiring your children in the same way? Mate, I barely see them. <laughs> <laughs> But you're, you're fit, you work out, don't you, Rita? Well, yeah, when you perform, you're kind of always sweating, and my shows go, like, an hour and a bit, so you kind of work... But I have a lot of adrenaline, so I kind of don't realise that when I'm working out when you're performing, so... I have fun in my workouts, if... Yeah. ish, ish. That's the same here for me, this show. Yeah, <laughs> full of adrenaline. It's a workout right here. Um, we're going to have yeah. to leave Rita at the moment, because Rita is going to put on a spectacular outfit for her performance. So, Rita, I know you need some time to get ready. So, Rita, oh, we'll be back in a minute. Rita, right. lovely to have you here. We can't wait to see you perform live. <laughs> you know what? I feel very lucky to have you here this evening because uh, I've never watched a show that you've been involved in that I haven't enjoyed. Um, but how much longer do you think you can keep doing it for? Because, like, it is, f for you, physically quite demanding, I imagine. I mean, he just stands in the kitchen, but you... Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I really genuinely just love it, you know? So, we've just launched this week a new show with Amazon called Eco Challenge, which is the toughest race on earth. It's like sort of 10 back-to-back -back Ironmans in some of the most extreme locations. And we have teams from all over the world apply, so we're just about to start filming that one. But, you know, life, life is an adventure. You've got to go for it. I think, I speak for myself, not you guys, but I think I'm totally unemployable in any normal job now. I love the adventure. I love being with my good buddies out there. So I hope, you know, we keep doing it for a little while. Bert, do you ever sit at home, watch television, doing fuck all? <laughs> I mean, seriously, because only listening to you makes me tired. <laughs> tired, but not because... It, I mean, it's very exciting. It makes me tired of thinking you know, of climbing a mountain or whatever. <laughs> but do you ever sit and think, you know, I'm going to get a packet of watches, <laughs> a pint of a Heineken, and watch Only Fools and Horses? Would you do that? <laughs> got to be said, that is a good night. That is a good yeah. night. I like... It's a very, very well. modern evening that you've got there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've also got, at the moment, I don't know if anyone else watching, I've been watching, I'm gripped by it, the new series of Celebrity Island with Bear Grylls is on at the moment on Channel 4. Uh, and it's fascinating the way you... I mean, you really push these people pretty hard on that island. It is hardcore, the island, and my respect for those that endure, and it's never at all of the numbers that we drop off at the start, people always quit. But those that are there at the end, it, respect. It gets really grim the next few weeks, and, uh, and total respect to them. How many weeks are they stuck on the island for? How many weeks do you leave them? They're four, four weeks. That's a long time. It, it is a long time, and, and we've learned, we've tried it longer, we've tried it shorter. That's about the sweet spot before they start really deteriorating health-wise and stuff, so, <laughs> you know, we're... To, we're I mean, we you take lost... it to the edge, but we've got to yeah. keep people OK. I mean, they killed three celebrities in the pilot. <laughs> And then one of them ate him. <laughs> Would you eat someone? No, no. If, say, no. we were travelling somewhere, we got cut off from civilization. Yes. Obviously, we're drinking our own pee. Obviously. Which is delicious, apparently. <laughs> Which one of us would you suggest we I... kill and eat first? I really hope you don't prefer dark meat. <laughs> <laughs>
If you're vegan, we can eat you. Because <laughs> you, you can't eat us. You can't eat us. No, it's true. Listen, <laughs> listen, if it was a matter of survival, I'd kill you and eat you. Like, <laughs> don't worry about that. Um, OK, so uh, it's all going good for you, though, Bernard. I mean, every time I see you, you seem so still full of enthusiasm, enjoying life every moment. I mean, are you someone you don't get down ever, or do you sort of have I do. ways we all, we all have our moments, and, uh, but the thing is... NGU, never give up, you know, you don't have to be the biggest, the bravest, the strongest or the best, you've got to, I've learned, just keep going and it's, uh, and that's the kind of message. That's the message for all of us and for Boy Scouts everywhere and Girl Scouts, of course, that's amazing. Bear, it's so lovely to have you back on the show. Mr Bear Grylls, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Bear, amazing. Thanks to all my guests tonight. We will be back next week with another great lineup. but now we've let you love me. Here she is, the wonderful Rita Ora.